Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are on the Isle of Siptar, on the west side of map square N10, building a riverside village. The requirements for this build are on screen now, and though I've used bizarre assets here, you could quite easily replace them with insulated wood. So without further ado, let's get started. You may have noticed there was no blueprint for the requirements, and that is because each build in this project is a small and simple base plate, which I've packed fairly tightly together, and will build up to create our small yet reasonably dense village. As you've probably seen from the title, this is indeed a speed build. The building of this village alone took a good few hours, so I'll be talking through my ideas and inspirations behind this project, the process of building up this village, and any difficulties I encountered. Coming into this build, I had the hankering to build on Siptar, so I was scouting around, particularly wanting to build something along this river. I ended up finding this fairly spacious and reasonably flat area on the riverbank, which I thought would work pretty well for a village. My main issue with building in the redwoods when I have done in the past is that sometimes the trees themselves are either not present enough or a bit too present in the scene, if that makes sense. This area cuts a really nice balance so that the redwoods can punctuate the village without becoming overbearing. I've built in the redwoods a couple of times before and that sort of balance of exactly where the influence of redwoods comes in is always kind of a concern for me, but maybe that's just a me thing. In terms of inspiration, the main source was from myself and Bard and Build's recent Stygian City build for the Community Chaos stream. We included a slums area that heavily used sandstone to create a sort of dense market town feel, and I thought it would work perfectly in the redwoods. I did end up making some stylistic changes, namely choosing to frame the builds with the pillar trick, adding roofs and including stable and insulated wooden pieces, but I generally tried to keep the same spirit. You know the old adage, if it isn't broke don't fix it, well I'm glad to say that philosophy panned out pretty well, and the village ended up very nice. The actual building process took a little while, I think a good few hours. There was a bit of complexity in that each build used the pillar trick and thus I had to factor into consideration for those pillars and how they translate to the upper floors. However, aside from that, there actually wasn't too much in the way of difficulty. The best thing about this village is that things are relatively simple. Sure, when it's all built up it looks pretty dense and somewhat complex, but at the core these individual buildings are really quite straightforward. There's nothing too overly complicated here, just a pretty humble design for each build. The secret is really the spacing between the builds and the environment. The spacing creates pretty natural streets and alleyways that try to hit the perfect balance between accessibility and density. The environment really carries most of the load here, to be honest. The atmosphere of the redwoods and the inherent tones of the area complement the sandstone pieces very well, which helps to build a really cohesive feeling in the design that may not have been present in other biomes. On the decoration front, this build took another few hours to fully furnish, but overall the village came out really well. One thing I really would have liked to include would be Climbing Ivy, but I actually don't own that set and I didn't want to include a mod so late into the build just to fit that aesthetic. The village is perfectly good without Ivy, but that is an addition that I think could have added just that extra finishing touch, especially seeing as this village will end up very much nature based. I think I'm going to have to pick up the Climbing Ivy set on the bazaar the next time it swings around. I've done a fair few builds now where I think it could have really helped the design out. In terms of theming, I've tried to keep everything fairly rustic to fit into the village. There's no grand marble statues or overabundance of gold or silver. I've tried to stick with a very earthen and almost natural material palette in a way with the decoration, with the only real exception being the Zamorian streetlights, but they are just so good at streetlights that I couldn't really use anything else. So that is about all to cover in regards to the ideas and processes of this project. As with other speed builds, I'll let the rest of the build play out, and then we'll take a cinematic look through the finished and furnished village, including some nighttime shots at the end. If you'd like to skip forward to the showcase, you can find the chapter by scrubbing the play bar below. This build came out great, better than I expected actually, and hopefully all of you enjoy the rest of the build. Thank you for watching, and of course a massive thanks to our wonderful esteemed coffee cultists for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. If you want early access to videos, custom made wallpapers, full size blueprints, your name at the end of videos and exclusive roles in our Coffee Cult Discord, check out the Patreon link in the description below and consider joining the esteemed ranks of the Coffee Cult today. Again thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.